Ezekiel 37 and verse, we begin verse 1 through 10. This is a very powerful portion of scripture. The Bible says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. This is the prophet Ezekiel speaking, a man of God. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. Say very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to the bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. There was no life still. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into the slain, this slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet as a vast army. Father, one more time, have your way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Whenever you want to talk about the supernatural, uh, people begin to wonder what the supernatural really means. And um, there's a couple of definitions about the supernatural that I brought out for you here this morning. The supernatural, it says, one definition, it says, existence beyond the visible. In other words, you can't really uh, see it with your natural eye. It, it, it's, it's beyond that. Existence beyond the visible. That's supernatural. Another description of that is departing from what is usual or normal. Something that is not normal. That's the supernatural. I put my own translation on this, and I wrote, not logical explanation to the human mind. In other words, you can't really, with words, describe or explain fully what the supernatural is with your own words, with human words. It's beyond human words. And so, as we begin to go into this year, and as we begin to, to go into the supernatural, we'll that we believe that God is going to bring about in all of our lives, the church, individually as well, we need to understand what God is really saying to us that this year will be a year of the supernatural. See, God throughout the Bible flexes his muscles, hallelujah, or in other words, discloses or, 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 or reveals himself, reveals who he is, not for the mere purpose of showing up, but especially he comes and he flexes his muscles when he comes to rescue somebody. God likes to show his power in rescuing people. To rescue, the, the word rescue means to free from confinement, danger, or evil. And if you go throughout the Bible and when you see the supernatural power of God, many times it's connected with rescuing somebody. And it's important for us to see how the supernatural power of God is used throughout the Bible. How God uses it. It's not just to show up and say, hey, look how powerful I am. I'm going to burn a city just so that you can see. No, 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 no. It's beyond that. It's way beyond that. So God is a God who rescues people, situations, circumstances, families. He does that in a supernatural way. He restores as well. And that word, the word restore means to bring back to original state. Hello? To bring back to the original state. 
That's what God does with His power, with His supernatural power. In fact, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but in the end, we'll end up in the original state that God always intended for His creation. Do you know that all of this that we're going through is just to bring us back to what God intended from the very beginning? Do you know that when God created us, do you know that we were not supposed to ever die? We were supernatural beings. We were going to be in His presence forever. But God gave Adam and He gave Eve the ability to make their own choices. He gave them a free will. And so they made a free will to come against God and to sin. And so when sin entered into their lives, death also entered into their lives. And that's the reason why there's sickness and illness and people dying and all that stuff. Because it was mankind who opened up the door so that death will come into this world. That's the reason why. So, Jesus, so God sent his son Jesus years later to rescue us from that ultimate state which will be total separation from God forever. That's what death really is. Death is not just that you die. Death means a complete separation from God Almighty. So, 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 so when you die, it's not, it's not just that you die. It's that you're away from God unless, unless you have accepted the gift that God has given us, brought to this world. His name is Jesus. So that whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have eternal life. Eternal life. What do you mean eternal life? Back to the original state. God wanted to. God created his creation. Us to spend eternity with us. We were going to be eternally damned. Or condemned forever. Away from him because of sin. He sent Jesus. So that as we believe and trust in Jesus. He'll purchase us back so that when we die here on earth we will go and spend eternity in the presence of God like he intended it from the very beginning come on somebody get, gotta give a praise that is the gospel in a nutshell God bringing us back to our original state that he brought us to at the beginning so he rescues and he restores he revives if he has to to revive is to bring back to consciousness or, or to consciousness of life. To bring back from a depressed, inactive state. That's what God does. And he shows his power to revive. And also, if he has to, God also has the supernatural power to resurrect. Meaning that he can raise people, raise situations from the dead back to life. That's the kind of God that we serve. Now, here in Ezekiel... That we read now. Because of their sinfulness of the people of God. Israel found themselves in what seemed to be a hopeless situation. Come on say hopeless situation. Because of their way of life. Because they're walking away from God. Because they took for granted what God had done in their lives. They walked away from God. And they got into all kinds of trouble. Where they were in a situation that it seemed to be hopeless in their lives. The city of Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple that they had there where they would worship God was burned down. All of its uh, implements and articles of worship that they used that were taken to Babylon. And many more were taken into captivity together with even some people. It, they were in, a ba in bad shape. It was truly a discouraging discouraging and disappointing time judah and jerusalem were no more they've been destroyed they've been overtaken by the enemy everything the people had placed their hope in had been destroyed so this is where israel is at that particular time they were dead as a nation and dead as a people they unquestionably needed the supernatural intervention of the almighty God. And guess what? They got it. They got the powerful supernatural intervention of God for their situation. And as we look at this particular situation that the people of God was in. I want to draw out of that three steps that would help all of us. That would help each and every one of us. Our church and individually 
that would help us go from death to revival. Because that's what we want in this year. Anything that is dead right now in your life. Anything that is hopeless in our lives right now. This year, God wants to bring it back to life. That's what he wants to do. And he's going to require no less than God's supernatural power to get it done. Are you ready? If you're ready, give the Lord a good praise then. The first step or the first thing that we see here in this portion of scripture, number one, if you're taking notes, go ahead and write it down, is you must realize or acknowledge your situation. You need to realize or acknowledge your situation. Some people like to fake it. But I want to let you know, God knows your situation. And you need to be real with God. Don't wait until it's too late. As if it could be too late. See, here in Ezekiel 37, 1, 2, and 3 that we read, the Bible says that the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones, he says, and led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. See, Israel's situation is depicted here or shown by God as being bones. Notice that God had Ezekiel walk back and forth among those bones to verify that there was no hope of life in them at all. So he showed them a big valley of bones and they were very dry, he says. And then he went back and forth. The Spirit of God took him back and forth as if he was inspecting the bones and see how much life was in him. And he, after he inspected them, he says, whoa, they've been here for a long time. They've been dead for a long time. There's no life in this thing at all, right? The bones are described in three different ways here in this portion of scripture. They're very dry, as if they've been there for a long time, as if the vultures and other predators cleaned them up good. Hello, somebody. There's also described these bones scattered all over. In other words, they were no longer connected. They were thrown about, all spread out. They were dead. And then also he says they were very numerous. In other words, there was many bones, not just a few, but many. It was seemingly impossible to sort out and to put together again all these bones. Apparently, my friend, a large army had been defeated here and they died. It is simply a picture for all of us to show that, that the best years of our life can apparently seem because of trouble. That the best days are behind and not before us. This is a picture to say, look at your strength, an army, dead, bones, dry bones. It could be your gift, your calling, your ability, your family, your whatever. Look at it, it's nothing but dry bones. This at one time used to be the strength of the nation of Israel. The powerful army that nobody can defeat. Now they're dry bones. God says, I want you to see the condition. Because there's not going to be a turnaround in your life. And there will be no miracles until you begin to realize. And you begin to acknowledge the condition that you are in. It's important to see these steps. Sometimes we think we're okay and we don't go and look at things in the spirit and what God wants to do and what God has been trying to do. Sometimes we don't want to hear what God wants to say to us. And God says the first thing for you to make a comeback in 2014, the first thing you got to do to be a champion again is going to be you need to acknowledge your condition. Stop trying to impress people. As if you are not going through what you're going through. Stop trying to fake it. Try, stop trying to do all those things and cover up as if everything is all right. You know deep in your heart it's not all right. If you want a miracle in that area of your life, God says to Ezekiel, I want you to inspect every area of your life. Inspect everything that is about you. And let me know, is there 
still alive in those areas. And he comes back and Jesus says, no, there is no life. He said, he said, he comes to him and he says, man of God, can these bones live? After he inspected them. And the normal answer to that question would be, no way, Jose. Heck no. How can they live? Look at that. Some of them are even broken. Some of them are chipped. Some, some of them are so dry. They're yellow because of the sun. They've been sitting there for so long. There's no way they're going to. That's your normal answer to what God asked them. But this man was a man of God. This man was a powerful man of God. This man saw that seemingly that was impossible to put back together. See, wherever this valley was located, the symbolism of the bones is clear. The people of God are dead and they're hopeless. Now let me tell you this, especially for some of you that perhaps are visiting us here today or or you haven't been coming to church long, or you're not saved. Sin, the world, bad decisions, and the devil would be glad to bring you and to drop you off and discard you here in this valley of dry bones. Sin and the world would love to get a hold of you, would love to get you on a run. Hello? And then when he's done with you, drop you off in a valley of dry bones. And say, oh, just a little bit more dry bones in the valley. I think that that's what happened to many of us before we came to God. There was a lot of us that were in that dry, in, in, in the valley of dry bones. See, sin has the power. I've said it before and i say it again. Sin has the power if you let it. You know, that's what I said. If you let it, sin has the power, if you let it, to take you farther than you want to go. I only go up to here. I only go to smoke a little bit of weed. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Da-na-na-na. Da-na-na-na. You can't stop. The one sin gets a hold of you. I, I, I know individuals. I know individuals who are doing time in, in, in prisons. Could they just said, I just want to do a little bit of this. But once they got in that train, sin train, they wanted to come back. They wanted to get off the train. And sin would not let them get off. Sin would take you farther than you want to go. If you, if you allow it, if you give it the power. Sin has the power, if you let it, to take you farther than you want to go. It has the power to keep you longer than you want to stay. Then he says, I want to go back. I want to get out of this. I don't want to be like this no more. I don't want to. And sin says, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You're going to stay a little longer. I'm going to keep you a little longer. I'm going to keep you a little longer. No, 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 but I, I really, really, you stay longer. You can't just get off the train just like that. And you know what the worst thing about sin is? I mean, it, 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 it's all bad. But one of the worst things about sin is that sin usually will cost you or, or, or it will cost you more than you're willing to pay. Some people lose family. Some people lose marriages. Some people lose children. Some people lose the calling of God. Some people lose, you know, everything in their lives. I know people have lost businesses because of their sin. Individuals who had everything have nothing. In fact, they're out in the streets. I met some individual a long time ago where he was out in the streets. I was ministering there, and, 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 and he was a drunk, and he was right there on one of the street corners. He was dirty and everything, and he was just there, and he had a little bottle on the side, and it looked like he had it for days already and smelled funny and everything. I, I prayed for him, and then he looked at me with tears in his eyes, and he says, you stay doing that, uh, young man. He says, you know, one day uh, there was a time when I used to be a minister of the gospel. And I said, oh, my God. And he says, you don't believe me, huh? And he pulled out his credentials of a minister of the gospel. Street corner. Sin will want to 
destroy you. Sin wants to destroy your life. Sin don't care about your family. Sin wants to destroy your children. Sin don't want your marriage. Sin don't want you to achieve and accomplish the calling of God upon your life. Sin doesn't want you to stay clean and sober. Sin doesn't want you to finish the home. Sin doesn't want you to restore your, your family to be connected. That's what sin does. That's why God had to send a powerful payment for that sin. It wasn't cheap. It was his only sin that will come and say sin I came to destroy the power of sin and death and all that call on the name of Jesus will have the power over sin forevermore come on give the Lord a good praise I thank God that some 26 years ago I accepted Jesus and he opened the door of that train and I got out hallelujah I got in another train, and this train is leading me straight to heaven. Hallelujah. And while on my way to heaven, we're preaching this gospel. And we call him people that were dead, alive, back to life. We call him families that were destroyed, back to restoration. Because that's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you surrender to it, when you give God your life, you allow him to do what he wants to do. Come on, give him a good praise this morning, if you know what I'm talking about <coughs> these bones were dry very dry they were scattered they were numerous the Bible says sin would like to keep you a dry bone huh and as Ezekiel surveys this terrible scene of all the dry bones God would ask him a surprising question son of man can these bones live huh the natural answer will be, like I said, no way, Jose. But Ezekiel knew enough about God and could not dismiss the possibility of God being able to still do something with those dry bones. Even though it looked like there's no way to the natural mind that those bones can come back to life, he still did not. Dismiss the possibility that God can still do something. He knew that there's nothing impossible for God. He knew, just like we know, there's any church that will understand the supernatural in this church. I said, if there's any church that understands the supernatural, it should be this church. When you got individuals who were out there like animals. When you got individuals that were in, 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 in solitary confinement. In a little, I don't know, 8 by 6 or 8 by 8 little room. Without getting out for years and years and years. They only come out for 20 or 30 minutes a day. For years, my friend. And they're dead like animals. And they don't know what else to do. But my God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the love of Jesus is still able to penetrate the most hard heart and say my son you can't live again you can be a man again you can be a woman of dignity again that's what God has for us I don't need to get too far into the church for God to really just break me when I see some of you come in I just see you oh Jesus thank you God Thank you for that miracle. Thank you for that miracle. Thank you for that miracle. Some that are sitting here today, you was ready to commit suicide, and I know some of you, and you was ready to just come out because of the despair in your life, and yet God rescued you, and God came and brought you close to him and gave you love and everything you needed, and today you can smile again. Before you were depressed and oppressed, taking pills and medication, you didn't care about life or the future. And today you're in the house of God. Today God is restoring your family. Today there's a great door of opportunity of connecting back with your little ones that the devil had taken away from you. And now you're beginning to, oh, there's a possibility. Now you're beginning to dream about a family that is excited about life and everything. Why? Because 
God injected you with life again. God gave you an opportunity again. And he's not going to take it or remove it. He's giving it to you so that you can be excited and serve him for the rest of your life. Come on, somebody need to really give him praise. Some of you are married because God gave you. Because God gave you another chance, another opportunity to life. There's some of you who God hears a silent cry inside of you. A silent cry that maybe sometimes no one else knows. Nobody else would see. But God sees right through you. God knows a silent cry. Oh God, but I was brought up like that since I was a little kid. Since I was a little boy. Since I was a little girl. This is all I know. Oh God, how can I learn to be? And God says he's going to take nothing less than the supernatural. The Bible says that with what is impossible with men is not impossible with God. That scripture in a nutshell what he's saying is this. Don't give up. Don't give up. Give in. Don't give up. Give in. Give in to the guidance. Give in to the love of Jesus for your life. Don't give up. Give in. I blew it again. I messed up. I'm always like that. I'm never going to be different. God says don't give up. Give up. Give in to the power of God. I will shape you. I will make you. I will revive you. I will restore you. I will, I will, I will, I will resurrect you if I have to. I got the supernatural power to be able to call things that are not as though they were. I'm able to create from nothing. I am the kind of God that you need in your life. And apart from me, you will be doomed forever. But with me by your side, but with me in your corner, there is nothing. Nothing impossible for you, for your family. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, don't give up giving to the power of God. Come on, somebody need to give a praise. The supernatural power of God. The supernatural power of God. How many understand that we're not about to give up? You're not about to give up. We're giving in to the power of God so that he can do the supernatural. What God wanted to do, here as I, as I quickly uh, keep moving on, hallelujah. Number one, realize or acknowledge your situation. You got to know where you're at. Yes, I need God's power, supernatural. My natural is not going to cut it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to get no breakthroughs. I'm not going to be the person that I need to be. I desire to be, but I can't. And yes, I want you to know you can't. On your own power, your own strength, your own ability, your own gifts, your own, you can't. You fall short every time. It's like trying to make it to heaven on our own. You can't. You need the supernatural in your life to break some things, some strongholds that the devil trained you to have in your life. The devil injected you for years and trained you to have all this garbage in your life. Don't think that overnight it's all over. God will save you in a moment, but it will take a lifetime. It will take a lifetime to be able to get rid of the bad habits and all the bad stuff that we've been brought up with. It'll take a long time. The only way you can keep on moving forward is when you know that you have a supernatural God with supernatural power that is by your side and is on your side. God is in your corner. Woo! I said, God is in your corner. I'm going to say that again with some of you that used to fight. And some of you used to fight in the streets. Some of you like boxing and fighting and all that stuff. I'm going to tell you something right here. God is in your corner. He's not on the other corner, the opposite. God is in your corner. That means whatever God has is available to you. What? 
everything that God is, is available to you. It's available to us so that we can make it. There's no reason to give up. There's a big reason to give in. Give in to the power of God. There is power in the word of God. Ezekiel 37, 4 through 8 it says, Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied. I was obedient. I prophesied. And as, as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise. Woo, hallelujah. A rattling sound. And the bones were coming together. Oh, Jesus. Bone to bone. Can you imagine that? I looked. Obviously, I guess, I guess he wasn't looking. He was just praying. Like some of us, you know, in the name of Jesus, call somebody. And when he heard that noise, he says, and I looked. And all the bones were moving. Finding the, 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 the entire skeleton was formed together. Can you imagine that? He says, oh my God, as he's prophesying, as he's speaking the word. Prophesy simply means speak life. Speak the word. Preach. That's what he means. He says, I was prophesying, I began to hear this. And when I heard that, he says, I looked. I was prophesying, then I, I know, I, there was a noise. He says, so I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. So it was just a skeleton, but all of them came in together. Wow. The Bible says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. He says, the word of God has the power to bring dead bones to life. The word of God. That's why we come, man. There's nothing else in the world that can give us what we get here. This is the best place to be on Sundays and Thursdays whenever we get an opportunity. Because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the Bible also says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. I mean, we have to be people that live by faith. If we're going to be people that live by faith, then we need to allow the word of God to penetrate our hearts as much as possible. So that our faith can swell up and, and we're people of faith. There is power in the word of God. The word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow, he says. He judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. He penetrates deep the word of God. Ezekiel obeys. And the results were amazing. There was a miracle. The supernatural began to take place. And thirdly, and with this I close. Say, Pastor. Come on, say, Pastor. Close with anything. Just close. I'm just kidding. Don't say that. Amen. Thirdly, Bible says all the bones came together, but there was still no life. Thirdly, for the supernatural to take place in your, in your life right now, you need to rely on the spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God. What we call the Holy Spirit. We need to depend. We need to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel 37 verse 9 and 10. This is what he says. And with this I'm going to close. Then he said to me. Remember the tendons and everything. The flesh came and all that. They were there. The bodies were made back together. But there was no life. They were just there. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into the slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. They were there, lifeless, but as he began to prophesy and breath into these bodies that were there, then they became not only alive, 
But they became the powerful army that they needed to become. Oh, isn't that a supernatural activity of the Holy Spirit of God Almighty? It is important for all of us to understand what God is trying to do. So in the New Testament, and, and, and I'm not going to go to it because I, I will go next week. But in John 14, 16 through 18, and with this I close, I promise you. John 14. You can go there, want to read it real quickly. John 14. This is what the Bible says. Verse 16. John 14, we begin in verse 15. This is what he says. Jesus is speaking and he says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Oh, Jesus. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you. And will be in you. Oh, Jesus. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Father, we thank you and we praise you for these words, Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. Jesus was saying to his disciples, he says, hey, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. It's time for me to go to heaven. But I'm not going to leave you by yourself. There's a comforter that is here. He says, he's not with you. But in a few days, he says, he's going to be in you, inside of you. As I go, the Holy Spirit is going to come inside of you. And remember that? In the Old Testament, the last part for the supernatural to take place is that pray that the breath of God, the Spirit of God, will touch the body and it will become not only, it will come alive, but it will become an army. And then in the New Testament, Jesus says, I'm not leaving you alone. The Spirit of God, with all that power and everything, is amongst you now. But in a few days, it's going to come inside of you. Oh, Jesus, all that power inside of me, inside of you too. If you believe in Jesus, He will make that your body. That's what the Bible says, that your body, our body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. And sometimes it's, it's difficult to understand, to comprehend. But I want to let you know that God throughout this year is going to open up doors and windows so that our understanding will come to another level, that our spirit and our soul will be touched by the spirit of the living God, and that we will come to the understanding that there's nothing impossible for our God. And guess what? He lives inside of us. Come on, stand to your feet right now and just lift up your hands towards heaven. That situation in your life, some of you have come today and maybe you've gone through some situations that you said, man, I'm in the valley of dry bones in this situation. It could be financially, it could be physically, it could be relational in your relationships, it could be in whatever area of your life that it seems like, oh man, it's not good at all. I don't know what's going to happen. And God says, this year, you need to acknowledge where you're at. You need to tell the Lord where you're at. You need to have understanding of your situation. You need to come to the Lord. You need to understand that there is power in the Word of God. There is power in the Word of God. And you need to understand that the Holy Spirit, if you're saved, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And He wants to do supernatural things in your life and through your life. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Lift up your hands all over the place. Nobody moving around. Nobody leaving yet. Just give us one minute, two minutes, and then we are going to go ahead and pray. Some of you are going to make a decision today as we enter 2014. And your decision will be, I'm going to surrender my life to Jesus. I never trusted him with my life, but it's time. It's time, it's time, it's time. Some other ones of you that have been walking with God, but you find yourself in situations that are hopeless or, or they're very discouraging. Today, you're going to take the step and you're going to say, oh God, I acknowledge that I need you and your supernatural power 
active in my life active in my life turn it on jesus turn it on in my life and he breakthroughs in my life some of you in ministry leaders and all you say man it's been difficult it's been hard god wants to encourage you today because he is an encourager he is a comforter he wants to come and touch you and encourage you in ways that you've never been comforted before because he is a supernatural god he is able to touch you and restore you and give you energy again and give you a fighting spirit again he doesn't want you to be depressed he wants you to be up and running and becoming an army he wants to do a supernatural work in your life. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you. Have your way, we pray in Jesus' name. So with every head bow and every eye close. Every head bow and every eye close. There may be one or two or three in this place. That you have not given your life to Jesus. You live the way you want to live. You do what you feel like doing. And Jesus says to you today, if you trust me, I will bring joy and happiness and peace in your life like never before. But you got to trust me. You got to allow me to lead you and guide you through life. If it's you today and you say, I'm ready to cross. I want to cross over and I want to allow Jesus to be the center of my life. If it's you from all over the place, every head bowed, every eye closed. By the lifting up of your hand, I want to say a word of prayer. One, two, three. Lift up your hand if you want me to pray for you right now. God sees this hand right here. God sees that hand there. God sees that hand right over here on this side. God sees that hand there. Right over here. God sees these hands over here, over here. There's many of you with hands lifted up. Anybody out that says, I'm ready. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. God sees that hand, sister. God sees that hand, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Now, many of you that maybe you're going through situations that are difficult. You may be walking with God for a long time or just recently or maybe you are new. And there's some situations that you find yourself in that are very discouraging. This morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will just touch you with the supernatural power of God to let you know that He's got your back. That He's going to be all right. That there's nothing impossible for you. If it's you and says, Pastor, pray for me. Then raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. I want to see those hands. God, God, God sees this hand. That hand. That hand. That hand. Wow. There's many of you. God sees that hand, brother. God sees this hand. right over here. The situation's all over the place. All over the place. Oh, hallelujah. God is going to do amazing things right now. As we begin to sing this song. Come on, step up.